Welcome to the Air Gun Show. I'm taking a look at MTC Optics' brilliant little copperhead compact telescopic sight in this week's episode. But before that, Richard Saunders is heading out on a double barreled hunting trip, setting his sights on rabbits and grey squirrels. So we're out again in the woods today, hopefully controlling some grey squirrels. Now the, the problem with the squirrels here is the wood in the, in the estate is farmed for its lumber value and by scratching the bark off the squirrels damage the wood, uh, the, the value of the wood, they scar the wood and they even kill trees and obviously they also predate on the songbirds here. Now I'm out with my mates Neil and Kevin. Neil is very kindly when he's finished the cooking has offered to do the, to do the camera work and my mate Kevin is going to be shooting as well. Now the thing is here, the squirrels tend to be very active in the morning and then lunchtime or early afternoon things really quieten down. So when that happens we're going to move over to another part of the farm to hopefully get some rabbits. Uh, the rabbits there are causing a problem by undermining a bank. So that's the plan for today. This is just one of the feeders we use in the woods. You've probably seen Richard shooting from this hide before. It's my turn today. Now I'm using a Walther RM8 UC. It's 2.2 caliber, sub 12 foot pound. On top, I've got the ATN x 4K Pro and that's held on as ever with sports match mounts. So Kevin and I are using a slightly different tactic today. He's going to shoot from a permanent hide. This is one of our newer feeders and to be honest it's been a bit of a slow burner. But the level of peanuts has been going down more quickly so I'm hoping I'm going to get a few shots. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up a simple screen hide to sit behind and then uh, see how we get on. To be honest, I've thrown this hide up pretty quickly, to be honest, because I didn't want to cause too much disturbance, but I think I'll be okay. There's lots of foliage around me, some good back cover as well. Now, the rifle I'm using is a Walther Rain. It's a 177 12 foot pound rifle. And uh, I'm using that because not only is it fine for the squirrels about 25 yards away, when I go up the farm later on for rabbits, I can use it up there as well. Now, on top is a Hawk Sidewinder Scope. And that is held on with a set of sports match scope mounts and I use those because they're guaranteed for life, not that I've ever had to call on the guarantee. And then I've put on the side my, uh, my GoPro so I can hopefully record a few shots down the scope. Well that's exactly what we wanted, that one came in from the left hand side and um, 
presented itself nice and side on at 25 meters it was a really easy shot but nice nice clean kill Well, that one came in from the from the left side again again really really confidently a little bit more head on to me that time but he went down nice and cleanly so that's two in reasonably quick succession so looks like that feeder might be getting some constant use now which is good so hopefully we'll get a few more That one, that hit and killed him stone dead from the second that pellet hit. He was, um, he clung on the side of the feeder for ages. I took him when he was sort of looking down and kind of looking out into the woods. And uh, it often happens when you um, headshot a squirrel, they kind of get like a clenching uh, instinct and they grab onto whatever they're holding onto and sometimes they can hang on for ages. But I could see through the scope that he was really cleanly hit and he was dead from the moment I pulled the trigger. Well, I've not seen anything since that last squirrel, to be honest, uh, and time's getting on and we do want to get up to the, the, the other side of the farm and get on the rabbit. So I think we're going to wrap up here, get ourselves across to the other side of the farm and see if we can get a few rabbits. So I've come down to another part of the farm. It's the same farm, just a different part of it, um, out to the pasture land. Now the farmer here keeps lots of sheep and the problem is that rabbits are undermining the, the fences with their digging and also they're obviously eating the grass. There's also a little bit of a market garden here and the rabbits keep getting in there, eating the plants and the vegetables in there as well. So it's really bright today now, so I think it's going to be difficult to stalk rabbits, but we'll give it a go and I think probably more successful will be to find a little corner in a hedgerow, dig myself in with a bit of cover and see if I can ambush one or two, but we'll give it a go.
Well, as I said before, it's really bright today and I've seen quite a few rabbits, but they've been in the distance. I just haven't got anywhere near them. It's hard enough when, when you're on your own, but with a cameraman in tow as well, it's really difficult. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to find somewhere to tuck ourselves into the hedgerow and see if we can ambush one or two. So I've got myself into a reasonable position here, a bit of shade and some back cover. There's some uh, a line of vegetation out here that I know rabbits come out on a regular basis. Now, I chose to use a 177 rifle today because I find that with a, a 30 meter zero, uh, my aim point is the same at 20 meters and at 40 meters, I only need a, um, a mill dot of holdover for 40 meter shots. I expect most of the shots are gonna come in the sort of 20 to 30 meter range along here, but hopefully we'll find out. Well, he must have been sitting in the long grass for quite some time because he popped out and started feeding straight away. He was bang on the 30 meter zero and yeah, hit him nice and clean and he just went down uh, dead as a dead rabbit can be. Well, that one came out in almost exactly the same spot and only about 10 minutes since the last one. Um, again, about 30 meters, hit him slap in the side of the head. He did the classic rabbit cartwheel of a rabbit that's been headshot and he's down. So I think we're gonna call it a day there. We've been out since first thing this morning. We've, we've thinned out the squirrels quite a bit and now we've got a couple of rabbits for the pot. So uh, yeah, I think we'll call it a day there. Thanks for watching. Rich Saunders and his mates getting on top of the rabbits and squirrels there. Next up, I'm taking a look at the MTC Copperhead Compact Telescopic Site. With more and more air gun shooters opting for compact or lightweight air guns, it makes sense to match them with a similarly proportioned scope. Now, one option is to go for a prismatic scope and the other is to go for a scaled down version of a more conventional design. Now, the scope I have here is the MTC Copperhead, which fulfills the latter option extremely well and without any compromise whatsoever on features and performance. This is the 3 to 12 by 44 times model and there's also a 4 to 16 times version and they retail for a very competitive 330 and 340 pounds respectively. Now, this smaller model weighs less than 570 grams and is just 248 millimeters long. And apart from being extremely compact, it's also quite a nice looking scope with its copper embellishments. Build quality looks and feels excellent. The copper head is nitrogen purged, waterproof, fog proof and shock proof. So you don't need to be afraid about exposing it to the elements or the rough and tumble of field use. Also, if you register within 30 days of purchase, 
It's also covered by a five-year warranty, which gives great peace of mind when it comes to long-term performance. The first real measure of any telescopic sight has to be image quality. And with this MTC, it is very impressive. Despite this scope's diminutive proportions, the sight picture remains sharp and bright in a wide range of light conditions. Now the tube is 30 millimeters, and that combines with good glass, effective coatings, and that 44 millimeter objective lens to give very clear viewing. The Copperhead boasts excellent finger adjustable windage and elevation turrets that are resettable. Now the clicks are really positive and each one adjusts point of impact by one centimeter at 100 meters. Now to make adjustments, you simply lift the turret to unlock, wind in the adjustment and then snap it back down to lock it securely in position. This scope is equipped with MTC's brilliant new AMD2 reticle. Now it's calibrated in mils at 10 times magnification to correspond with turret adjustments. Now it offers mil and half mil aim off points to compensate for wind drift and pellet drop. I really like it. It offers plenty of aiming points, but without looking too cluttered. The central crosshair element of the reticle can be illuminated red for improved contrast in tricky light conditions or against a dark background. Now the battery is supplied and the control is the outer dial on the left hand turret, which gives a choice of six levels of brightness. The dial on the inside of the left hand turret is the parallax adjustment wheel. Now an oversized wheel is available as an extra but I got on perfectly well with the standard one. It's nice and grippy and it turns with just the right amount of torque to dial out parallax error and keep the image pin sharp from less than 10 yards out to infinity. Magnification is wound up and down using the similarly positive dial at the front end of the ocular bell. Now I've got to say that I think the three to 12 times zoom range on this model is pretty much spot on for use with a sub 12 foot pound air gun. Um, if you want a bit more precision for longer range work, then maybe the four to 16 times option would be a better choice for you. But I find the top end of this one gives me plenty of precision to tackle live quarry out to 40 meters or even more when shooting off a bipod. Now the final main feature of this second focal plane scope is ocular focusing via a fast focus eyepiece to ensure that the reticle is pin sharp for your eye. Now the copperhead also comes with some pretty handy extras. I've already mentioned the battery for the illuminated reticle and you also get a lens cloth and a set of push on flip up lens covers. So that's the MTC Copperhead in its 3 to 12 by 44 F2 guys. It's another great scope from the MTC stable and its performance and build quality far exceed its asking price and modest proportions. Now, I initially said that it could be a really good choice for smaller air guns, which I certainly think it is, but it would also be an excellent way to reduce the weight and bulk of a bigger rifle to which it would be equally well suited. Now I've been really impressed with it and I'd certainly recommend taking a look through one if you get a chance. I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this week's episode, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. And in the meantime, you can keep up with me on Instagram at Matt Manning Outdoors. Thank you for watching, and remember, if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Don't miss the award-winning Airgun Shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today in shops or online.